Uh, I'd like to thank Alexei and Rethink uh, Trust for inviting us to talk here today. Uh, I'd like to start by emphasizing that we are a public, open source uh, energy industry blockchain, uh, not a private uh, blockchain. Uh, as uh, many have pointed out to the uh, different features of blockchain and why they create value in different areas of activity, uh, I'd like to emphasize that in energy, uh, there are specific challenges that uh, blockchain can solve, uh, ranging from the security that it provides to authentic, uh, secure uh, metering and aggregating, especially at the grid edge, uh, renewable energy, especially uh, resources, in a uh, less uh, expensive way than uh, it can be done otherwise. Um, so, what we are doing as a foundation, a nonprofit foundation registered in Switzerland, uh, is that we are providing the core tech, the platform. Uh, on top of the platform, there are energy corporates and startups building applications. Uh, and uh, we are also working with major projects on scaling solutions and interoperability. Uh, so we started with the uh, Ethereum stack. We chose uh, what we found to be the most performant client at the time, uh, probably still is, which is the Parity client. And we uh, are now talking to Polkadot. We're one of the industries that is part of their uh, piloting and Raiden for a scaling solution. Uh, so what Raiden essentially does is takes off off-chain uh, those transactions that do not need to be uh, all on the chain and then aggregates them and authenticates uh, on the chain. So uh, what were our challenges? Uh, just like everyone else, uh, we found uh, blockchain to be extremely interesting with high potential, uh, but also in early development stage uh, with a number of unknowns, uh, with uh, errors included as one uh, innovates, uh, many of which are well known in the uh, blockchain uh, community. Uh, we also found the adoption uh, to be very slow, uh, especially in conservative uh, industries such as the energy industry, uh, but we also found yearning for knowledge and uh, fostering innovation in internal communities among a range of corporates uh, globally. Uh, as we are a regulated industry, we also need regulators to come on board. Uh, many have not still heard of blockchain or are just about uh, learning now. Uh, some are more advanced. So as you saw from a slide earlier this morning, we even have a regulator in Chile uh, which has uh, created their own uh, blockchain-based application uh, to authenticate energy data uh, in Chile. And um, many utilities are still developing use cases uh, and some are more advanced uh, than others. And by the way, there is no global um, traditional global uh, divide here. Uh, there are leading uh, utilities and startups uh, around the world, but there is a cluster uh, in Europe, especially of energy blockchain uh, uh, startups, which is interesting from a tech development point of view. So this is our roadmap, map, which is probably most interesting to people uh, coming to this conference. Uh, so we started from the original uh, software stack. Uh, we went immediately to proof of authority system. Our testnet has been up and running uh, since November. Uh, it's called Tobalaba. You may know traditionally that developers like to name testnets um, uh, based on names of different um, underground stations. This one happens to be in Chile and uh, is largely run on uh, renewable energy. So we thought it was an appropriate name for our testnet. Uh, we, uh, you can already observe the testnet. Anyone building applications uh, can use our testnet. So although we are energy focused, we are open. Uh, and at the moment, any application could be tested on our testnet for free. You can go on our website, which is energyweb.org, uh, get some uh, tokens from a faucet and start testing. Um, so from there, we uh, focused on a range of features. 
uh, including light client uh, development to have a more secure uh, light client uh, so as to be able to connect a range of devices in the energy sector, not just a large SCADA in a power plant, but also a solar panel and smaller devices in energy. Uh, we also uh, supported development of, of permissioning features of WASM, um, uh, and we did this in cooperation mainly with uh, Parity Technologies. And uh, what is important is that as we are a nonprofit and open source focused, everything that we have financially supported as a foundation is available to everyone else uh, open source. It is as a um, uh, the uh, gentleman from IBM said GPL, but it's GPL version 3. There is no copy left. Anyone can use it. Um, and um, I'll go now to, um, I can quickly say what the plan is, and that's the purple part of the, um, of the ladder. Uh, so D3A, uh, I'll, I'll present very briefly, is a simulation environment we're building as another layer on our chain. Uh, Bridges and Raiden, I already talked about in Polkadot, not only scaling, but also interoperability uh, solutions. We imagine in the future, although we are a public chain, that there may be private chains for specific jurisdictions that are regulated in a specific way, and these chains will then need to communicate with the main uh, chain. Uh, so uh, there were a number of surveys of various startups uh, in energy blockchain. Uh, and we did one ourselves. This is 41 startups that presented at Event Horizon uh, this past April in Berlin. Uh, as noted by Alexei, it's the largest energy blockchain summit. Uh, we do one every year, so that was the second one. Next year, we will do one for the launch of our network, our full launch. Um, and um, most of them look at the more disruptive applications like peer-to-peer -peer trading. Uh, but there is also some uh, basically process uh, transaction simplification application as well, back office uh, applications that are applica applicable to any uh, sector. So, uh, and just to go back to the tech, uh, most of them use uh, Ethereum or Ethereum-based chains. Uh, I think only one uh, uses Hyperledger. So we are tech agnostic as a platform, but at the moment, the community that we're working with is very focused on Ethereum. Uh, so what are the, some of the apps? And I wanted to present these to show you what is happening in the ecosystem. Uh, so we're providing the platform, which is free, open source, public, uh, developing features uh, that help these applications uh, get to the market more quickly and more effectively. And these are the startups that are working with us and that are part of our ecosystem. Uh, so some of the examples, uh, Electron uh, started in UK and helps customers switch uh, from one utility to another uh, and is also looking at uh, grid fl flexibility issues and other issues. It's working with larger utilities like Centrica and others. Uh, utility billing is a very important uh, case of process simplification and reducing costs uh, in energy business. EV charging, so share and charge, you may have heard of. They are also present here in the Netherlands. They are mostly present in the UK and Germany. Uh, Energy is a big utility that invested in them, uh, and they're looking at shared EV charging. But in the future, what we can imagine as we are rethinking trust is that if you have uh, your Tesla or, or another electric vehicle, that you can use it also for, uh, as an energy source, not just for your home, but also to sell excess energy uh, to your neighbor or someone else, create a, a microgrid. Uh, there are also startups in the uh, flexibility, what we call demand response area, uh, like FlexiDAO, uh, and then there are other areas. Those are just some that I wanted to present. Uh, one area where we as Energy uh, Web Foundation decided to also devote resources in addition to the core tech is an application that really uh, demonstrates the value of the blockchain technology that is immediate. So I don't expect you to understand how renewable energy certificates are being issued. I just want you to compare this picture to this picture to understand why blockchain makes it easier and it's just a simpler process. And when you take out all the intermediaries, you also take out a lot of the cost. So in renewable energy certificates, uh, these uh, intermediaries can take up 40 to 60% of the price 
of uh, the, a transaction uh, in issuing and selling uh, renewable energy certificates. Right now, it's so complicated uh, that you don't have many players either issuing or buying certificates. But when you get to this, and when you have a simple interface, uh, then uh, things change. We can really enlarge the market. So what we did right now is uh, we have a, um, just an alpha version of this uh, application. Uh, we have connected uh, devices. Uh, we have uh, created provenance, issued uh, certificates, and we have trading uh, happening through pilots. So you can see some of them in the upper left uh, corner, and those are real assets. This is actually happening in reality. So we have Microsoft buying uh, certificates from ONGI, a large French utility, uh, in three countries of operation. Uh, we have uh, E.ON, which is a large German utility buying from a smaller uh, German utility. We have a bank buying from Singapore Power Group uh, in Singapore. And the last one in the bottom right corner is our company. You can see part of our office space. Uh, we're buying from two developers who have connected their solar panels and are issuing renewable energy certificates. So this is happening. This is real. Uh, this is not distant future. Uh, so the next step for us is to build the interface uh, and to allow this to, you know, for anyone to use it very easily. We're also talking to national registries because although this is not a highly regulated business of issuing renewable energy certificates, uh, the way the registries register them uh, needs to change to allow blockchain-based uh, uh, applications. So we're talking to them. Um, and uh, hope to have, again, a real-life uh, country registry uh, implementing this solution uh, sometime in the next few months. Uh, and uh, the platform that I mentioned uh, is probably going to be the most disruptive in energy. Uh, at the moment, it's just a simulation environment where you can, you can basically um, you are, we're going from bottom up, we're connecting devices, we're having them determine uh, how much they want to consume, when, uh, and from what, uh, uh, from what, from where the energy will originate based on preferences. And um, so at the moment we did an alpha, and what we have already done is to demonstrate how uh, you can determine preferences to, uh, to enable a microgrid to be formed and to continue uh, by selecting what is more important uh, in your home. So in the future, for example, imagine there isn't enough power in a certain area, you can still set up your preferences so that, uh, so that the fridge remains to be in working condition in most homes. So uh, this is where it's going, uh, where a market-making agent comes from the device, from a home, uh, rather than from a utility or the grid dictating uh, how the market will work. And the pricing also will be negotiated by our devices, uh, uh, which is a very interesting way to look at an energy market future. How can you get involved? Uh, one, if you are developing apps, you can already use our platform to test them. Uh, and uh, so, as I mentioned, we're in a test phase for at least uh, close to another year. Uh, the tech is ready. We just want to develop uh, further scaling solutions, and we want to integrate our governance mechanism in the tech. So as we are a proof of authority uh, and an energy industry network, we need to think about antitrust. We need to think about data protection, uh, making sure that the market is competitive. And uh, uh, so our validators are the guardians of the system. And protocol upgrades based on our governance mechanism will be voted on by those that are running apps on the system. So in our uh, governance uh, design framework, uh, app operators will have the power to influence how the network further uh, develops. Um, if you are an energy startup or utility or an energy actor, you can also join as an affiliate and become part of our ecosystem. And I'll be happy to talk to you more in person about that. Uh, we will have a public uh, token uh, generation event sometime next year. Right now, it's still uh, by invitation, very private, because uh, we really care who the stakeholders are. So to us, it, it matters that those that are part of our ecosystem are involved, invested uh, energy actors and those that care about a cleaner uh, energy uh, uh, sector. Uh, and finally, if you want to come work for us, we're always hiring, so that's an email uh, that you can use. 
And this is my email, uh, since there is no time for Q&A. Uh, and if you don't manage to catch me at the conference, please feel free uh, to email me. Thank you. If we can do probably one or two questions. Okay, great. So Perfect. Any volunteers? Yeah, si since you're doing proof of authority, why didn't you just pick Hyperledger? Why did you do Ethereum and then uh -huh. do the whole thing yourself? So like I said, we are uh, tech agnostic. Uh, we did not choose Ethereum because we had a political preference towards it. Uh, it was based on a technological assessment that the Parity client at the time was most performant technically. And uh, also, uh, since our ecosystem is very important to us, the community at the moment uh, feels much more strongly about Ethereum-based solutions. Uh, and in, you know, from going back to the uh, startups that I have uh, mentioned, uh, that survey was completely objective. We didn't pick them based on the tech that they use. Uh, but it is a dominant tech uh, in our space. Um, having said that, we're open to consider other solutions in the future. And I just, I had a conversation with uh, representatives from Hyperledger. So if they provide solutions that we think are te technologically a good fit for us, we are completely open to that. One more question or? Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you.